Dana, let's just jump into SMU. Uh, it, it, this is your this will be your first trip, right? Since you came back because uh, of COVID and oh, no, and I was thinking about that on the way in. Um, <clears throat> played them here in 08, I think. I don't. I can't remember. I, all I remember is the hurricane game in 08 was Air Force. So I think we. I, I guess SMU came here. I can't remember 08. I remember 09 going up there in 09. That was a pretty exciting game. <clears throat> or Case uh, threw that touchdown pass at the last few seconds of the game to win that. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I understand the history between Houston and, and SMU. And it's another one of these games where it's the last one on the schedule for a while. It means a lot to a lot of different people. And get ready. Uh, going to be fun. Do they fit that category of – you know, down the road, regional, you know, sort of the – they would fit the group of five in the non-conference schedule. Is that something you'll, you'd look at or is it sort of, uh, you know, playing them later on down the road versus, you know, you won't play Navy or East Carolina or Tulsa? Do they fit that? Yeah, they do. Uh, they do. Rice does. You know, North Texas does. Um, Tulane probably does. I mean, there's a lot of history with, with Tulane as well. Uh, Tulsa, <clears throat> Memphis. Uh, it, it, schedule is going to be so. It's going to be tricking. It's going to be trick, uh, tricky. It's going to be challenging. I mean, I know what the Big Twelve wants. Uh, they want Power Five, Group of Five, and FCS. So that's only one Group of Five a year. You know, SMU is a good program. They got a lot of good things going on. Is there going to be expansion talk? Probably. Um, you know, where that ended up going, I, I don't know. I'd be lying if I told you I knew. <clears throat> but, yeah, this game means a lot to a lot of different people. And, and uh, you know, I'm not thinking past Saturday. Honestly, this is a huge game. Uh, we know it's a big game. They know it's a big game. Uh, throw records out. It's going to be hard. going to be tough. Um, you know, we're all playing for a lot. And so it's going to be it's going to be everything that we want in a, in a college football game. Uh we got to prepare better this week than we did last week. We can't go into this game up there uh, with the lack of preparation that we had last week. I was very proud of it. I mentioned this after the game, I think, to you all and to our team of, <clears throat> you know, we, we didn't use – we didn't have excuses. Nobody wants to hear them. But we didn't prepare very good last week for a variety of reasons. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of sickness. There's a lot of injuries. There's a lot of missing practice. There's – just there's there is a lull in our season, you know, that I think is just natural, just happens. You know, if, if I could figure out how that doesn't need to happen, then obviously we would. But it just happens with teams and you know playing so many tough games and getting a couple of wins. You just human nature says relax a little bit, which you got to fight it every year. Um, you can't have those excuses this week. Tomorrow morning is a is a huge morning for us to be able to prepare to go play on Saturday. We're not we're not a team that can then go through the motions and not prepare good and go play good. You know, there's you know I, I was happy with the no excuses, get it done mentality last week, and and we did. We got it done. We didn't play great in some areas. Certainly, some individual performances were outstanding, like our quarterback. Uh, Clayton Toon, but um, just as a team, I don't think we played super, super, super great last week, but we got it done. Uh, this week's going to be different. We got to prepare to go play this game because it's going to be it's going to be everything we want again. Dana, talking about that preparation, obviously you all have some familiarity with Mordecai, but they he didn't play last week. They played a couple QBs. Can you just talk about sort of break that down a little? What you've seen from. Um, their guys, um, I don't know exactly who's going to start or anything. Like oh, I would imagine Mordecai's going to yeah. be their guy. I mean, this dude's played a lot of ball and has played well. He's played well this year. Um, he has, you know, I studied their Navy game a lot just because we're getting ready to play Navy. And so I studied that one more than any other game that I've played. But he's played lights out. <clears throat> they got one of the best receivers in college football. They got a good old line. But that Mordecai makes, these, makes this thing go, right? And so they've played good without him. You know, looks like Stone's out, you know, uh, based on what happened last week. And, and the Jennings kid, the freshman, went in and I thought looked really good, you know. So, um, I, they've, 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 they've played well with whichever one's in there. But the intel that we're getting is, is Mordecai's going to play. I mean, he 
was out with the concussion. Things happened. He looked fine on the sidelines to me, and I would assume that he's going to want to play in this game as bad as anybody is. So we'll prepare for him. And then, you know, I thought the freshman Jennings, that kid went in and played well. Dana, you just touched on how, I mean, you guys have a lot to play for. Can you talk about really the the – the senior leadership and just leadership overall from the team. Obviously, we we know the story of the season, the tough games to start the season, but to really be able to stick together and now where you guys are in that position to be battling for, for the top of the conference. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, there's about 12 seniors that I thought are really making the most of their opportunities right now. You know, uh, you know clearly our quarterback is playing as, as good as anybody. Uh, <clears throat> you know, but to uh, have a guy like Tabo, you know, step in and and play at that level to be the defensive player of the game. I thought was great. You know that. You know he's a guy that's been in and out and in and out and in and out, battling injuries. And you know, going into his last year, he's he's making the most of everything that is, is coming his way. So very proud of him. You know, Keyshawn Carter on offense made a couple of plays last week that was outstanding. You know, it's like it's his last go around. I'm not ready to get into the senior. You know. The whole senior day, you know, shed a tear thing. I ain't, I ain't ready for that right now. So, but I, but to your point, there is some seniors that are going there. Jamichael Neal, and I really don't want to start calling people out because I forget somebody right now. I'm not prepared for that. But Jamichael Neal has been playing his tail off, you know. And you know, Keyshawn went in and made a couple of plays. Tabo, player of the game, went in and made some plays. Uh, we'll get to that in a few weeks. But uh, you know, with everything that's happened this year, and with as, as much. You know, injuries and, and just close games and all that stuff, you know, you better have some good senior leadership to hold things together. And I think that's a big reason why we've won the last three. Ben, it looks like a lot of what they do offensively goes through Rice. I mean, he's been a big playmaker, judging by, you know, how your, you know, the secondary's been banged up and you've had some guys move around. What What's that matchup? like to you to, to have to sort of I mean, win. a challenge uh he's targeted probably more than anybody in college football i mean we got a guy on our side that gets targeted a lot uh, rice has been targeted more you know so clearly he's their guy um i would assume had some opportunities to go somewhere last year uh with the way college football is much like you know tank had opportunities to go other places which is illegal but happens um you know, he, he stuck it out there just based on his loyalty to SMU. He thought he was a really good player last year. He had some really good players playing alongside of him last year, and Danny Gray and Reggie Robinson. Uh, those guys are gone, and so he's the guy. And so I think that's probably why he stuck it out, familiarity with, 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 with SMU, with uh, Mordecai, with, you know, their, their coaching staff as well, with, you know, with Rhett coming back. Uh, had some familiarity there too, so. He's their guy, no doubt about it. I mean, getting targeted a lot, uh, production is unbelievable. I mean, he's tops of everything and uh, is deservingly so. So we'll have our hands full with him, there's no doubt. They do got other good players, too, that they can spread it around and, you know, continue to do with what they've been doing for the last few years. Dana, do you have any injury updates on guys like Tejan, uh, Manjack? Let's see what it looks like tomorrow. Uh, just one other. Mark Caldwell is the only one, which I mentioned that, which I do want to mention. You know, just next guy up mentality type thing. You know, Keyshawn got his, the wind knocked out of him, and Peyton Sawyer went in there and caught three passes in one drive and scored a touchdown. Very proud of him. You know, a guy that just hung in there and just waiting for his turn to go out there to to play. Um, you know, and then Jamar Caldwell goes out with a lower leg injury. Don't know how long, uh, but and then we brought uh, AJ Holmes off of the off of the the scout team and put him in there, and the dude played about 30 snaps and looked like a real player. So I'm going to still try to redshirt him, but we got him for three more games. <coughs> um, but I'd like to save his year. But he looked like he belonged. You know, him and Dot right next to each other looked like something that's going to be fun to watch moving forward. Uh, Dana, just to follow up on some of the new faces to play, I know it wasn't that much, but Lucas Cooley got in the game. Can you talk about what you've seen uh, from him during the, the practices throughout the season? Who's that? Uh, Lucas, I'm sorry if I put his last name, but Lucas Cooley. Cooley. There Cooley, you there you go. I just, I just didn't understand you. But uh, he's been getting better. Uh, he's been getting better. That bye week was big for him because we practiced him a lot. Um, is very engaged uh, when he's not repping. 
he's taking reps. I mean, and, and you say, well, everybody should be. Yeah, everybody should be. If they're sitting back there, they should be taking reps. When they're not taking reps, some take that a little bit more serious than others. But, you know, he got to be able to practice, um, you know, based on the bye week, not preparing. He looked really good. And so we made the call, you know, you're going to be the next guy in. Um, wanted to wanted to see what it looked like. I, I that, that Thursday of the bye week, I uh, we had a younger guy's Thursday night football scrimmage, and I made him live, and – it looked good, so you know I thought he went in there and, and did okay. I mean he was he was a little nervous, which when you first go into a college football game, you're going to have some jitters. I didn't see jitters out of out of AJ, but um, I, I did out of Lucas. You know that quarterback spot's a little a little different, but you know he went in there and threw a couple of good passes to to CJ and put it in play. Uh, I guess no good deed goes unpunished. I tried to get those guys in there to get some reps, and you know. Trevante got called for a holding, which was, which is horrible. It's a bad call. I mean, I I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know why you got to flag a second team tackle for a good block. If that if we get if that happens, we get the first down. Then I can run a couple more plays, and the game's over, and we don't have to get into the. You know, backups uh, having to play and stop people and the the hands team and all that crap, which that just irked me bad. But. Um, I thought those guys deserved to go in there and play. And Lucas was one that I thought deserved going and play. Wanted to see what it looked like. It didn't look bad. So we'll keep repping him and see how he progresses. Dana, are you at the, the point of the season where on your board you can sort of sort of start seeing guys that use those four games, uh, you know, get them in when you can't? Or is it a matter if you – I mean, if you can't, you can't. But would you like to, to start doing some of that? Well <laughs> – haven't been able to until his last game, and then it came back to bite us, you know. So it's like, gosh, dang, man, what do you do? I mean, you try to, but you, you ain't, I ain't worried about that. I'm worried about winning. Um, every game's hard, you know. Last week we knew it was going to be hard. It was. This week it's going to be hard. You know, the next, what do we got after that? Three more going to be hard. Um, I, don't, I don't. I'm not. I'm not interested in playing guys just to play them to see what it looks like. You know, uh, but if I have an opportunity to, I will. And that's what I did last week, and it, it didn't work out good. Um, but uh, we got our eye on who needs to play and who needs to get the four. Uh, you know, uh, Aaron Willis played for the first time. Um, you know, Lucas Coley played for the first time. He didn't have a red shirt, so that one really doesn't matter. Uh, but Aaron Willis will play three more games and red shirt him. Ossie's played in one, and we'll play him a couple more. <clears throat> and red shirt him. Dame played. Uh, Nadame Tucker played a couple early, and we decided that he's going to need that extra year of development. So uh, we pumped the brakes on him. You know, got two corners. You know, Justice Hugo and, and DK Friend that have not played yet, but we'll probably see reps um, here over the next couple of weeks. Um, so we 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 we'll, we we'll, we'll, we'll try to save it if we can save it, obviously. Did you uh, see the news yesterday with the the Big Twelve uh, network agreement? I don't know if you you know coaches sort of get this time of year getting your own bubble where that stuff's yeah. more up on the administrative level. But uh, seeing, I think it was roughly you know I think it's two point something billion. So it's 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 pretty significant for you guys going into the league. Uh, you know, over the next few years. No, it is. It's it's what we want. It's what we've signed up for. I I don't. You know, we've had these conversations a lot. I don't really focus too much on, 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 on future when it comes to the 2022 Houston Cougar football team. It's not fair to this team. <clears throat> now, what's happening behind closed doors and recruiting and facilities and development and marketing and ticketing and and game day experience and and all that uh, better change. A whole lot of things better change, uh, but it takes finances to be able to do that, you know. So, you know, I was a part of this a decade ago when the athletic department went from what well, was probably two or three million a year to twelve or thirteen to eighteen, nineteen to twenty-eight to forty, you know, at the other place I was at. It makes a big difference, makes a big deal. But uh, you know, the tricky part is 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 trying to fix a whole bunch for twenty twenty-three. With that money ain't coming in for three, four years. 
So yeah, it's exciting for the future, but uh, the more the more challenging thing is is going and playing this weekend at Southern Methodist. But uh, you know what what those games look like next year and that schedule that's about to come out in a couple of weeks. When you see that thing, you're you're gonna say, yeah, it's gonna it's it's eye opening uh, to to think about what the schedule is gonna look like next year and how much work it's gonna be to be able to compete. You know, I mean, our our bosses have been. Uh, very clear, uh, you know, we're not just happy to go uh, into the next uh, year into the Big 12. You want to compete, well, a lot of things got to happen in order for that. I can assure you that. <clears throat> Y'all had a, uh, a corner. They, they usually don't say what's on the corner. They said Zulu Warrior was on one side, and I can't remember what the other. This past week, it was. It's the African continent and a line. Is somebody on your staff picking out the? Is it Dorchester picking out these coins? Or? I got no idea what you're talking about. Honestly, I don't. I mean, I, that's part of game day experience, game day operations, which my job is to try to put a good product out there on the field. I don't have anything to do with all the external stuff. You know, sounds like a Dorchester deal. I got no idea. I I would probably have heard that. I mean, he's a nerd and comes up with like the, the a lot of good ideas and smart things and all that stuff uh, i haven't heard that one so I, th I think that's probably more in the marketing game day experience I, I got no idea on a more serious tone the uh you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago about short yardage plays uh in the run especially in the run game and needing to sort of improve on that there were a couple on saturday i think it was the the drive that ended with tank getting the, the touchdown there is that means that something you still work on or is there is it is it a i mean where do you put your finger on on how we got to keep focusing on pad level and just getting our hands down in the dirt and coming off the ball with some force now uh that, that's never not going to have to be talked about i don't care <clears throat> what it looked like last week or any of that we got to practice it better our short yardage situation happens on wednesday afternoon and how we practice short yardage mindset scheme and it's not just the five, it's the five plus tight ends. We had 13 personnel in there. Uh, our backs got to continue to do a better job of seeing things and, and, and hitting it a little bit better. When we get into quarterback sneak situations, toon has got to do a better job of driving his feet, which I don't feel like he did a great job at Memphis when it came to that. Um, but didn't look great in the first half against Memphis, and I thought it's looked better. You know, but there's a scheme element to it too. That that touchdown pass to Tank, which we had one against Tulane as well. If they're going to put ten people up in every one of those gaps, then he's going to be pretty hard to cover in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So you know, scheme can scheme can help. You know, which we got good coaches that can come up with some good scheme stuff. But the mentality of coming off the ball with low pad level and getting a yard has to exist. One more. Thanks so much, coach. Awesome. Appreciate it.